Tyler wants to join in. He's just, he's, he's waiting for the right moment. You're going to see it one day. Tyler's going to come over here. All of a sudden, you're going to see it. You're going to see a lot of movement happening. Maybe Eric from the back come over here. Jorge, who sets up the lights, he's going to be like, I got to get on. We should have a dance party. Real, full-on dance party. I know people would watch. Do you know Eric can break dance? Can he? He can, he can break dance. He can spin on his head. He can spin on the floor. What? It's wild. Is he goes. For- he goes full eighties. He takes his shirt off, puts on a <laughs> pair of lying. suspenders. Eric's gonna be like, "I hate Tyler. You're fired." We're gonna hear from somewhere. I don't know if Eric has the authority to do that, but he's gonna work on it in the next hour and see if he can make that happen because he's probably pretty mad at you right now. Everybody likes a dance party. You know it. First of all, today I'm solo. I'm fired up, irritated about some things, which you know you like an irritated Vila. Everyone does. Uh, I have a couple of announcements before we start. Before we get to some, this is going to be crazy, guys, by the way. Yeah, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. This is going to be crazy because there's a lot of video content today. I want to do some video reacts because people are just batshit crazy out there and we have to call it out, Um, as well as some tweets I saw that were fascinating. I want to announce two things, first of all. One is I am on an app now uh, called Manect. You got to go check it out. It's very, very, very cool. It's, uh, I think, PBD came up with the idea. I think it's a valuetainment special. And what it is, is basically you go on the app and there's numerous people on there. PBD's on there. I'm on there. And you can sign up for a call with one of us. You can sign up to text us a question. You can sign up for a video call with you pull, you know, four of your closest friends. You sit in a room and I talk to all of you. Now, what can you ask about? For me, really anything's on the table. You can talk to me, ask me about media, You can ask me about any of the shows I've been on, what's really going on behind the scenes of some of these shows. If you're looking for a career in media and you have some questions about how I started, mistakes I made, happy to share all of that. I worked in academia for a while. If you have questions about what's going on in classrooms, what to do if you have kids that are in settings where there's a lot of woke material, you want to talk about that. I'm down to talk about that. You want to talk about health and wellness. I know I've chronicled the fact that I got diagnosed with Lyme disease several years ago. I came out. I feel better now than I did before the diagnosis. You want to talk about healing, any of that stuff. I'm down for that. You want to talk about kids. I have a kid. I've made some mistakes. I do some things really, really well. Any of that stuff. I also grew up behind the Staten Island dump in a small condo and I launched this whole career. So if you need advice as to, hey, I am don't come from money. I'm not really sure how to do this. What do I, Whatever you want to talk about, I am down. You want to talk about dating and relationships? I will tell you. Listen, I know. I know you want to know what we're really thinking. I am here to tell you. No, <laughs> I'm here to give some good advice on that. You know I like my dear Abby, dear Jedediah. I learned a lot in that sphere as well and I definitely would do some things differently. So... Let me know what you want to talk about. Regardless, get on Manect. You can go check out all the different options for me. And if you want to ask me something that wasn't covered here, go right ahead. Everything is on the table. I would be down. So that's announcement number one. Second announcement is, you guys know I have social media, so you should follow me on uh, Twitter. It's a lot of political content, at Jedediah Vila. You can go to Instagram. That has a mix of different stuff. I have a great Facebook page, and I also have... It doesn't have content of mine on it. I have a Rumble channel that is an aggregate of news. So if you're a news junkie and you're really into news clips and catching what the latest crazy thing is that Joe Biden did or a dad at a school board meeting or any of these viral videos, my own content is not on that particular channel. We're going to have another announcement coming on that soon. But on this channel, it's a it's a really cool news aggregate. So go check that out. Jedediah Beale of Rumble. You know I was going to get in on the Rumble action. Tate's over there. Um, who else? Somebody else dropped today. I just saw that went on Rumble. Did you see uh, Russell Brand has an exclusive something going down, I think, weekdays at Rumble. So they're booming. Why are they booming? Because there's a lot of deep concern about censorship that goes on with big tech. So Rumble has stepped up to the plate. I always said there was kind of a void in the market. Get somebody out there. Get somebody who's going to kind of give an alternative, provide an alternative. And Rumble is right now very, very much on the rise, which I am not surprised by. I also have a Locals page. Locals is affiliated with Rumble. It's a lot of really cool stuff going on on the internet. So check out my Locals page as well. But um, one concern was brought up to me. A few people were really worried. They see what's going on in big tech. They see what's going on, people getting banned here and there. And they said, Jed, are we going to have to worry about you? This is my promise to you. You will receive my content. 
You will receive it uncensored. You will receive it unfiltered one way or another. I will remind you, I am the girl who left. I shouldn't say left. That's not the cry word. Who 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 exited <laughs> two big television jobs because I refused to be silenced. I also refused a third job. Big money, big promises, big covers of magazines, all that stuff comes along with it. Big interviews, all that stuff. I said, no, thank you, because I wouldn't get an experimental vaccine. So I care very, very deeply about this issue of censorship. I will not be silenced. I will not be censored. You do not. You do not, I repeat, need to worry about that. I'm figuring it all out. Don't you worry. So today I want to talk to you about some stuff. Some of it's crazy. Some of it's funny. We're going to do it all. The first thing that caught my eye was an image. Okay. I'm scrolling through Twitter. I like Twitter. I do. I know people get banned there too, but it's entertaining. It really is. And I look there and this is from Dr. Sean Baker and it says, can't wait to see 2042. Okay. This is these Calvin Klein ads. You look on the left, that's from 1992. Okay. That is Kate Moss. Um, fit, Now, Kate Moss did take a lot of heat back in the day. Let's not forget that she was very, very skinny, gaunt at times. So let's not forget that as well. And then on the right, you see this image. I have to be honest with you. I'm not even confident what's going on there. I see a woman who is noticeably obese in the front. That's not healthy, right? We can have a discussion about what is healthy. You can have skinny people who are unhealthy. You can have obese people who are, you know, unhealthy can come in all shapes and sizes, but obese is not healthy across the board, I can tell you that. She is obese in the front, and then there's someone behind her, and I have to be honest with you, this is not to be disrespectful, I really don't know what's going on there. I don't know if that's a man, a biological man dressed as a woman, I don't know if that's a woman transitioned to a man but still wearing, I'm not sure, I'm not confident. Tyler, do you wanna venture a guess? I, I really don't know. We, we actually had this discussion <clears throat> uh, before the show started, we think it's a man. I think it's a man in woman's attire. A man in woman's attire. I mean, there is a, a face, a lot of facial hair going on there. So it's a lot I, of facial hair, and there's a lot of body hair as well. Right. So, what do you glean when you look at these two? First of all, can you imagine if someone had showed us in 1992 that image on the right? People would have been like, "What the hell is going?" I mean, you would it would have blown your mind, right? This is the creeping normality that we talk about, creeping normality of madness where, you know, they inch in little by little with the madness so you don't you're desensitized to it and then you wake up one day and it's just normal. That does not look so much normal to me. Something odd is going on. Okay? Not to mention that now we're in the trend and we've talked about this with Cosmo and self and all of this where obesity is being glorified. We showed those images of this is healthy and it's like a very morbidly obese woman. Several images you can find of that actually. And I actually went back and looked at some of the magazine covers back in the day and that's not what people were looking like on the cover of magazines because it wasn't desirable to be obese and it also wasn't part of this new woke culture where we have to, you know, sort of glorify everything that makes people unhealthy. Have you noticed that pattern that things that make people unhealthy, obesity, you know, force medical decisions, even against your own doctor's wishes. This is all being pushed on people. Ask yourself why. Think about why that might be happening and who benefits when that happens. Who benefits from censorship? Who benefits from one message going out there all of the time and dissent being squashed? Who benefits when people can no longer vocally say, something about this picture on the right doesn't look right to me. Something just looks not quite right. Who benefits? Well, maybe the people who are trying to get young children on certain types of medication and puberty blockers, maybe certain types of woke, you know, talking points that need to penetrate media, which is owned by big pharma. You really need to connect the dots on all of this stuff, because when we talk about the system, you know, it's a very important conversation. You're talking about, um, you know, the FDA, the CDC, all of that big pharma. Then you're talking about Silicon Valley. You're talking about big government. You're talking about the World Health Organization. You're talking about all of these institutions, which somehow seem to be benefiting from unhealthy, dependent people. And it's an important conversation. So you look at that and your first instinct is to laugh. And your second instinct is to say, this really isn't funny because this is what is now representative of our culture. This kind of unhealthy, something is wrong mentally something's not right here and it's being not only condoned but outright endorsed 
Um, Okay. On that note, with the fall, I really think society at large in many respects is crumbling right now. And the people who are screaming from the rooftops are the ones being censored and silenced, of course, because the crumbling is intentional. I look at this video, this pops up um, from a Twitter account. And remember when Bill O'Reilly used to talk about Fox News viewers from a long time ago will remember Bill O'Reilly used to talk about the dumbing down of America. And everyone used to be like, oh, Bill. You know, Bill was kind of older and he had the white hair and he was always doing some type of show about like how Christmas people, the left hated Christmas. And he was kind of painted as like a Grinch on the right. And because he was older, he kind of sounded like that get off my lawn, the dumbing down of America. You know, my dad used to say that. So everyone young was like, oh, that's for the old, it's like old people talk. As it turns out, America's getting dumb, not just America. Yeah, the youth is really profoundly dumb in many cases. So you watch this. I want you to laugh, but I also want you to cry. I want simultaneous emotions on this. Let's take a listen. It's fantastic. It's New York City, by the way. That's Times Square. Let's take a listen. You got volume? Let's see. Yeah. Somewhere. Somewhere. Over the- oh, here we, here, go. We go. here we go. Here we go. Originally. Um, <laughs> I definitely don't know. No, give me give me your best guess. I guess a country. Mm. What is a country again? Do you know what country the Panama Canal is in? No. If you had to guess, like, what do you think it sounds like? It's a guess a country. Europe. Yes. Do you know how many moons the Earth has? Around how many? If you had to guess. Two. Okay. Yes. Do you know what time this is? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, uh, 245. Yes. Do you know what country the Great Wall of China is in? Country? Yeah. If you had to guess. Japanese? <laughs> yes. Do you know what the third month of each year is? Ain't that leap year or some shit? <laughs> Yeah. Do you know what 15% of 100 is? Fuck. <laughs> Around what it is, if you had to guess. Probably like 75. I don't know. Yes. Can you name all the months? September, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. Yes. Do you know what 7 plus 7 plus 7 is? 28. No, no, no. I'm bugging. Um, 14... That's seven. I don't know. What do we call a, a shape with five sides? Is it an octagon? Wait, that's six. That's eight. Octagon is eight. Is it a stop sign? <laughs> is it a, you call it a stop sign. Didn't you know? So, Tyler, we laugh. We laugh. It is funny. You have to let yourself laugh in life because honestly, life's just too short not to laugh. But terrifying. That's real footage. And he has a bunch of those. You can go and you can watch this over and over. It's not like, oh, he really had to work hard to get 10 people. It's everywhere. Everywhere. So y'all laugh when I say abolish the Department of Education. But you know it's true because those kids are probably in school coming out and they don't even know I mean come on somebody says to you and the best part is when they say she doesn't even say Japan she says Japanese about the Great Wall of China it says the Great Wall of China of China is in the sentence so here's my points on this number one I think it's important to do these these man on the streets because you have to expose what's going on right You can't just me sitting here and saying, oh, the dumbing down of America. It just doesn't translate the same way as you see. Oh, wow. These people are dumb. And you have to be able to say dumb. I don't want to hear like, oh, you're hating on, you know, the the intellectually challenged. I'm not going to say the intellectually challenged. Dumb is dumb. This is dumb. These people are not properly educated. So here's my issue. Number one, what's going on with education? What is going on with education? Are they getting an education at all? What does it look like? What what schools did they go to? Can we now have a conversation about government funded schools? Can we now have a conversation about why you need vouchers and why you need uh, competition injected into the marketplace? Because otherwise your end product looks like that. You don't need to send your kids to school parents to come out and they can't tell you where the Great Wall of China is. 
Okay. And they answer Japanese. Okay. Some of those kids, I don't know, did they go to college, high school? I mean, these are older individuals in some cases. <clears throat> okay. Secondly, where are the parents? Education does not stop, begin and end with school. So where are they? Are there no conversations happening at home about anything? Truthfully, think about how much you learn at school, right? How much you're supposed to learn at school, I should say. But all of that actually continues or sometimes even starts at home around the dinner table. You're always, re I'm always reading with my son. I'm always talking to him about shapes and colors and, you know, observing what we see outside and, oh, that's this and, you know, animals. And so what, what is going on at home? Are there absentee parents? We always talk about that too. Absentee parents, is there not are parents not invested in, in their kids at home? Are these kids now that are just staring at a phone all day and they're not interacting with the world? They're not asking questions because they're like this all day. What's going on? What's broken? It goes beyond the educational system. The other thing is the media. This is the Kardashian culture, right? This is reality television, brain dead TV. Now, don't get me wrong. I like some brain dead TV. I do. I like to sit sometimes and have that hour. I watch The Bachelor. I enjoy every minute. Listen, if you're going to put yourself into that shitty situation, I get to laugh at you. That's it. And I watch it and I sit and I have I have my little snack, oftentimes not popcorn, but you know, you, you know the drill. Have my little snack and I enjoy every minute of it. But that's not all I'm doing. I'm doing a bunch of research for the show. I'm reading constantly. That's my like hour escape away. That's my not, I call it my mind numbing hour. Are these kids, are these young adults in a constant state of mind-numbing everything? Is this all they're consuming now? Something's wrong here, man. I mean, and you know, we do laugh. Like I said, you laugh at that those first images, you laugh at this, but then in, in, in a second, you catch yourself and you're like, uh-oh, because your tax dollars go to a lot of these schools. So what are you paying for? What are you paying for? Somebody to come out and be like not able to, that is, how old was that guy, would you say, Tyler, didn't know how to tell time? I mean, that's got to be a decent... I don't know, but 16, 17, 16, 17, going 5, 10, 15, 20. You got to count around 15% of 100. Now, I'm not good with percents. My dad's at home watching. He's like, AJ, that's my nickname. AJ, don't don't be a hater because you're not so good with the percent. True, but 15% of 100, you know, of 100 is the easy one. And to say 70, even if you had a venture and guess 75. So we're in trouble as country. Bottom line, big trouble, big, big, big trouble. This stuff, I mean, it goes beyond. And, you know, the answer that people will have is, oh, throw more money at education. Yeah, I, I don't think so. I don't think I'm going to throw more money at whatever is producing this caliber of intellect. It's not going to work for me. So we got to fix the school system. We got to fix what's going on at home. And we have to fix what kids are consuming in media. You're not going to be able to change media at large, but you can certainly change what they're consuming. This is batshit crazy. Can you imagine? Do you know people like this, Tyler? No, I would. Thank God. If I did, <laughs> I wouldn't. Oh, um, but actually, I, this leads me to an interesting question. You know, China has TikTok. Yeah, they obviously have TikTok, TikTok, but they ban what we watch in the states: the dancing videos, the pranks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And they promote, you know, science experiments, people excelling in academia, people excelling in sports, like what have you, like actually beneficial to. The country and the population and the populace. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the state should take a step in that direction? Of, no. No. I would. I mean, I'm never going to advocate for a ban of anything. No. Do you think? Do you think that TikTok? Do you think the Trump administration should have banned TikTok? You know, no. Based on what I know about, based on what I know today, no. Although I'm constantly, and you know, I've I've been toying with the idea of getting a TikTok. And I haven't yet because I'm still on the fence about I'm very concerned about that personal data mm -hmm. and where that goes. But I'm at a point where it's like I have what I have out there on social media. I'm comfortable with the public consuming. So I wouldn't make a TikTok page with private stuff like how Instagram used to be or Facebook used to be where right. it was private. But if I'm comfortable saying it on air and I'm saying it anyway or I'm comfortable putting that stuff out there, I'm not really opposed at this point. But you can't ban it. What needs to happen here is that 
this stuff stinks from from the family level. This is the problem. Is like, what are we drawn to? The real conversation is why are Americans drawn toward just mind numbing stuff? What is going on that's wrong here? You can't ban it. If you, I remember there was a, a young kid who grew up with me. My family was pretty open in terms of like, I never had a curfew. Um, my mom always said you didn't have a curfew because you didn't need a curfew. Like you right. weren't that kind of kid. But I wasn't that kind of kid because my house wasn't the kind of house where everything was like always like you're not allowed to do this or you you have to be in bed by this or you need to eat your food before you get your, you know, how some families it's like you need to eat before you get your drink. I mean, it was crazy stuff I saw. So I grew up with a, a, a girl, a little girl, and she her, she came from a house where like everything was like, don't do this. Don't do that. You can't do this. You can't do that. She had no freedom at all. She like didn't feel like she could talk to her parents. And as a result, that girl, as we grew up, it was like completely different world. She wound up being very loose. She wound up sleeping with a bunch of guys. She wound up doing a lot of drugs. She wound up tr- drinking a lot, coming home, crawling through the window. And I was just sitting at home doing my schoolwork because I had the kind of thing where like I could talk to my parents and they really kind of talked to me about things as opposed to said, you can't. They said, here's why you might not want to do that. And this is what could happen. And this is what I did. And this is how it didn't work out so well for me. So I think it's more about communicating with young people in a way that makes them feel like they can talk to you. And they don't. So they go into these circles and they hide and they kind of try to figure things out on their own and they shut their parents out and they shut adults out and it's just toxic. Mm -hmm. Um, So no, I would never advocate for a ban of what's going on in those spaces, but I would like assess and like as a parent, you have a minor, you have a child, you can say, like, I, my kid doesn't have a phone. Like, I, you say, oh, but he's two and a half. Two and a half year olds have phones. They sit, they stare at the iPad. As a parent, I feel like you have to say, these are limitations for you. But as they grow, if you allow them access to those things, I think you can have conversations about like, hey, these images are filtered. These people don't look like this. Like, here's why this is bad. Or here's why you shouldn't feel bad about yourself if you look, you have to talk to them. Right. And I think that's the biggest issue in school. Like, Teachers aren't talking to kids in a way that resonates with them so they're not absorbing information or they feel like they don't have to learn, don't have to study, it's not important at home. No one's really communicating with kids anymore. Well, and if they are, they take it too far and they, t- they end up like the mom for mean girls. Right. You know, like I'm best friends with my kid. She can right. never do anything wrong. Right. I'm not going to set any rules or boundaries. Right. Yes, exactly. Like, And that's what's interesting. Like, I don't know really how my parents did it. It would be interesting to like talk to some moms and dads, but they wound up having this balance of I knew it was mom and dad. Like I couldn't just do whatever, but I also wasn't inclined to do whatever because I didn't grow up in the kind of house where like those values would appeal, those things would appeal to me. You know, I I never, truthfully, I'm kind of like, you'll be like Jed. I never, I think I smoked, I took two puffs of a cigarette my whole life, never tried drugs, never smoked weed. Like Just it just doesn't I don't like it doesn't interest me. I didn't grow up in that like my my house kind of like didn't I don't know. I wasn't escaping my house. That's another challenge. Kids oftentimes grow up in houses and because there's a lot of broken homes and because there's a lot of drama going on in the house there they need to escape that and their escapism now is used to be drugs and alcohol. Now it's like really bad television kids watching pornography way too young and kids absorbed in social media in a world that's really unhealthy for them because they don't want to be in their own homes. So I think I really take everything back to the home and that's that's the biggest starting point for me. So I don't want to see governments getting involved. I want to see families getting involved um, at the start. So, but it is a problem. I mean, it's it's really crazy when you look at these videos and you're like, people can exit high school and not have basic knowledge of anything really just like basic understanding of just the world. And it's it's startling uh, because then you think, well, how, where are they going to work? Like, well, how do you apply for a job? You can't. Somebody says a Great Wall of China and you say Japanese. I mean, where are you going from there? You know, it's not it's not a good trajectory right. from there on out. Let's not going to lie, though. I wouldn't have gotten the Pentagon. Somebody Pentagon? had to say it in the chat for me to really? remember. Pent- well, Pentagon. I was like, wait a minute. It's not a hexagon. Right. right. It's not an octagon. Right, right. It's not a polygon. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you wouldn't have said, is that the stop sign? R- well, <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Stop sign? Tyler. <laughs> you never know. With, Ty- with Tyler, you never know what you're going to get. Don't, and those know. have six sides, don't they? Stop signs? Yeah. Yeah, we can draw one. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. I, oh, I just drew a really ugly... <laughs> My mom's at home. My, I'm really bad at art. 
I'm very creative. I can write. I'm a really good writer. Terrible at art. And I remember when I went to my mom. This is another good lesson. I said, Mom, I said, I really, this is, I was old. I was like 22 at that time. And I was like, not old, but you know, I wasn't a young kid. And I said, I really need, I think I'm just going to paint. I want to be, I've, I had probably watched a movie like The Notebook. You know, she's all naked, butt naked. She's just painting. Everything felt real good to me when I watched that. I said, I'm going to paint. She said, AJ, you can't draw a, a, a straight line with a ruler. And she was right. I struggle sometimes that ruler. I don't know. It's, it's, it, is it chipped? What's wrong with it? So sometimes as a parent, good lesson too, you got to be honest with your kids. I know it's like shoot for the stars, dream big dreams, all that stuff. But at some point, you got to be willing to say, honey, I don't, I don't know if Picasso's in your future. Like, I don't know. You can give it a shot. But I remember that. And this anyway, mom, if you're at home watching, uh, can you see that? Th that was my stop sign. By the way, my mom is a brilliant she draws every. She sits down. She draws something. It looks like I don't know. Monet did it. I'm like, what the hell? Where did I come from? Why did I get any of that stuff? Is jeans aren't involved in something, man? I don't know. Okay. Now that I've had that small meltdown, Tyler always gets me into a meltdown. You ever notice Tyler just sits unassuming, just sits, and then he throws something out there, and suddenly it's just sweat. I feel sweat pouring down. And the only time I can get back at him is when I say we're going to do a show on sex and he's going to get bashful. That's all I've got, people. It's all I've got in the way of revenge. Okay. Speaking of the crazy, um, there's a story out this week. I don't know if you saw the GQ article on AOC. Lord help us all. I, I wasn't going to put you through that, truthfully, at large, because I already put you through the Vogue thing, the Vogue interview with Jennifer Lawrence. And truthfully, I didn't have the, have the heart to do it to you twice. But this is interesting. This comes from Newsweek. It says this, when asked if she thought she or someone like her would become president one day, Ocasio-Cortez expressed doubt because of her status as a woman of color in a white, male-dominated environment. While she believes anything is possible, she told GQ she is aware of the reality of her potential career trajectory. So many people in this country hate women, she told GQ, and they hate women of color. And it's not just the right wing. Misogyny transcends political ideology left, right, center. I admit to sometimes believing that I live in a country that would never let that happen. So these people are insufferable. These are the same people, by the way, that screamed and ranted and raved. Oh, this is a racist country. This is racist, racist. Country is racist through and through. And then that's the same country that elected Obama twice. You just can't, you know, you can't speak rational anything to these people. What's interesting about this to me is that she's got the Hillary Clinton complex, obviously. A lot of them have it. She needs you to feel that she can't win because she's a woman. Maybe she can't win win because the vast majority of the country wouldn't agree with her policy-wise, that if she actually got on a debate stage and she stepped off, you know, stopped tossing her hair and doing her little videos about, what was that, a garbage disposal, you tell yeah. me? Yeah. Never seen a garbage disposal before. You know, she relates to the TikTok audience. I get it. She's got that appeal. She's young. She's youthful. She's attractive. I understand all. She's saying things like, the greater good. And if you've been dumbed down, by the way, like those people in the other video... Her shit will sound good to you. So I get it. But maybe when she hit the debate stage, that wouldn't work so well. And she actually had to talk about policies and cause and effect. She also has no executive experience. Maybe that would be a problem for her. Not the fact that she's a female, the fact that she's never run anything. And people like these business owners because they've actually had to balance budgets and make ends meet and understand the implications of their policies. So they don't take any ownership of these things. These individuals repeatedly take no ownership, no personal accountability, there's zero self-awareness. I have a hiccup coming. If I start hiccuping, I apologize in advance. There's zero, zero of that. It's blame. I'm a woman. You hate me because I'm a woman, even though I'm the most, I'm so smart and I'm so amazing and I'm, I know how to fix the country. I couldn't, it, you're all misogynist. Horseshit. So I'm just tired of this nonsense. Hillary Clinton, I think is still saying it. She's still saying it. I lost because, it, come on, you lost because of you, honey. Nobody likes you. That's why you lost. You really think AOC wouldn't win the presidency if she ran? I don't. And here's why. I think she would do really well until she hit the debate stage because I think she's brain dead. I'm going to be honest with you. I think most of the generation that's going to be voting when she would run is brain dead. I think mm. this is the same thing with Gavin Newsom. I think there's a, a, a huge percentage chance that she could become president as well as Gavin Newsom because people don't give a shit about policies. No. They don't care. It's a popularity contest. No, I'm going to tell you Gavin Newsom is, is very unlikable. Um, he's not going to read likable like to people. He's got that like kind of 
slimy used car salesman vibe to him, I don't think that he would, I really don't. I think he would have a very hard time. And also there's so much hypocrisy in his own background in terms of like him going off and living at large during the lockdowns. There's too, there's too much dirt on him to be I, brought out. I don't think, I think once you get the machine behind you, I don't think that people care that much. And it's sad. I think the state of politics today is we're going to get everybody out that we can to vote. Every single person in the country is going to vote because they know exactly what's going to happen because people don't care about policy. Mm. They don't give a shit about policy. It's a, it's, it's a popularity contest. I think it depends on who they run against because honestly, the machine was so against Trump. Not only was the left wing machine against Trump, but the establishment right was against Trump too. And he won anyway that first time. The second time he lost because of him. It was his, it was really, he lost because he did not, there was a lot of cards that weren't played right for him. And also because the machine, you're right, rallied around with the COVID policy, but he was too interwoven in that. There was a way to win that election. Um, there was a way to win that election. But regardless, mistakes get made all the time. I, I don't think that AOC, it depends when she runs. She's very young. She's got a lot of time. But I think she's going to have a, I think she's more brain dead than people realize. And I think when challenged on any policy, it's going to be like it's going to be not quite Kamala, like the sun, the moon and the stars. I was going to say, have not, you seen our vice I president? Know. Well, that's true. But she would never win a presidential election. Today is election. the day to continue doing what we've been doing every day. And now is the time yeah. to continue. Now's the time to do the work that we've been talking about because the work needs to be done in the work. And she does this, too. I don't know where she's. Is there something up here? Is she looking up? Is there somebody hanging from this? Is there a prompter up there? There's a lot of this that goes on and there's a lot of, I don't even know. I'm always like, something going on? I don't, I don't, I don't know. You notice that? It's something weird. And then the laugh, you know. But no, AOC is is challenged. And, and listen, she will face, I think that there is going to be an uprising among young people against the millennial generation that rejects a lot of this over-intrusive government. It has to flip. It has to flip. It has to flip. There's no way that we continue down this path. I think there's going to be backlash to a lot of that. And she tongue ties a lot too. So morning consult poll. This was a couple weeks ago. The share of young people ages 18 to uh, to 34 who identify as liberal has dropped more than other age groups. Percentage who identify as liberal, 18 to 34 in, in 2017, 47% of people. In 2022, that number dropped to 34 percent. Yeah, that's what so I'm you're, saying. So you're watching Gen Z revolt against. Yes, this they're and say, going no, to. No, no, no. They're not going. This is she's a millennial. Like millennials will love her. There's going to be backlash to this. I'm telling you. Um, they're they're they've gone too far. And I'm really curious to see how Gen Z. I'm very very curious how to how the next generation's post millennial. I don't know all the 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 letters I don't have them all right but they're going to react to this differently she's she's not going to be able to win a presidential election um machine or she's going to need one hell of a machine I don't know she'll need to mess with some voting machines I don't know okay I want to talk about New York City and I said to you Adam and I had a conversation several weeks ago Adam uh over at Saucecast. if you don't know him he's cool you should check him out anyway we had a conversation about New York City he had gone to New York I hadn't been there for four months but lived there my whole life and he was like no it looks great it looks great and I was like mm. so then I went to New York and it looked like a cesspool so I came back here and I said did they blindfold Adam and send him around I'm gonna need to bring Adam on Adam's gonna come back on don't you worry we're gonna have that debate but I see this New York Post New York City block hires armed security guards to patrol against drug-ridden street unsurprising and I said I wrote something above it on Twitter like oh this is for the New York City is back morons you know them New York City's back you know and they say that while they're like walking past like a bunch of literal rats in the street filth dirt half naked people and they've just been robbed you know some people need to live in the land of delusion that's just the way it works they can't they can't they need to feel like they're in the in the the, the land of Oz Anyway, this was interesting to me because it's talking about Greenwich Village. People who know New York know Greenwich Village is a, a nice neighborhood. In fact, that was my stomping ground in college. I lived in Staten Island. I went to school in Staten Island. I drove into the city all the time, and the village was my stomping ground. What they're talking about here is West 4th Street between McDougal and 6th Avenue. Used to be a super artsy district. Great restaurants, great little shops. I always say if you go to visit New York, go to the village, skip Times Square, skip all the touristy stuff and go to the village. That's the real New York. Apparently it is the real New York now. It's loaded with filth and drug addicts publicly on the street. So this is interesting. The West 4th 
uh, block association hired security officers strapped with pistols. Oh, look. Look at that. You mean they didn't have just giant foam bats like little kids? You know, no water guns. <laughs> Why not? With pistols from uh, Black Tie Protection Services of Upstate Monroe to surveil West 4th Street between McDougal Street and 6th Avenue for the month of August at various hours of the day. The neighborhood of 16 years is suffering from an influx of emotionally disturbed drug addicts and an exodus of cops. Hmm, interesting. Made all the worse by bail reform and soft on crime Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg. He's a disaster. An absolute disaster. It's like criminals just roam free in New York City over and over again. We have residents saying we're a liberal city. The village is a liberal area. Well, I've lost my liberalness on this. It baffles me. I always say liberalness is amazing until it hits your front door or your backyard. It's amazing. It's kind of like the conversation about illegal immigrants. Everyone's like, oh, let everybody in. Oh, you're so bigoted. Let everybody in. Texas is so bigoted. And now Texas is taking those individuals and shipping them to New York City. And New York City is like, well, not here. Isn't there someone else, somewhere else they can go? It's all great, the utopia until it hits their front yard. And now you see the crime. So you now have these liberals that supported defund the police because it sounded good and it looked good on a sticker. It looked so good. They were like, yeah, defund the police. Yeah, they were out in protest. They were like, you have vax mandates. I got the vaccine. Everybody else should have to get it. And now suddenly the cops are like, I'm done. Business is picked up and left. Nobody, law enforcement is just gone. And there's blatant crime and they can't walk to the corner to get their green juice. And they're like, shit, I can't do this. Is there an armed guard somewhere? You'll see. I'm telling you, it's all good. You have to let them sink. Remember I told you, you let them sink. You let these cities sink. Sad to say, let them sink. And what comes up will be rational thought. Think about the Giuliani years coming out of that. Ugh, it was like just filth of what preceded. Um, interesting on the second page, it gives you some stats. <clears throat> the NYPD's sixth precinct, which patrols the neighborhood, has seen the greatest increase in total major crime in all of Manhattan. 81% increase in crime with burglaries and grand larcenies leading the charge. There have been two murders so far compared to zero in 2021 and rapes and felony assaults are up 43%. 43% rapes and 8%. Petty larceny increased from 840 to 1334 or 59% and misdemeanor assaults climbed 40% from 197 last year to 275. So it's unsafe. It's tangibly unsafe to be there. It's sad. Um... I say this with no, like, I'm not happy about this. This is my city. Like, I grew up in, I grew up in Staten Island and Brooklyn, but I was in Manhattan constantly, constantly. It's where I, you know, hung out, went dancing. Like, even 10 years ago, my friend and I talked the other night and said, we used to go out dancing 10 years ago. It didn't look like this. I mean, the, it has been a very, very rapid decline since COVID hit and then, you know, post-COVID, very, very rapid. But at some point, these policies will eat their own. They will eat their own. So Pac-Man, it's coming. It's coming. You, you'll see these people. Oh, wait, but there was some comment about Florida in here, too, I think, at some point. Oh, yeah. Cindy Slater of Florida moved her daughter, Jessica, into an apartment on West 4th. The first night we're there, a guy walked straight toward us, pulled down his pants, and showed his penis. There were people peeing on the stoop next door. You see this all the time. I saw, I told you, I saw public indecency like that several times by Central Park right outside the Plaza Hotel when I was there. Filthy, disgusting. Can't raise a family in that. Disgusting. Let them sink, people. Let let the liberalism eat the liberals. Let them eat it. Pac-Man, din, 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 din. and at some point, liberals are going to be like, no, no, you're not going to do this to me. And they're going to fight and they're going to get their way out of Pac-Man's mouth. And you know what then? Then they're going to be ready to vote differently. Ultimately, that's what it's going to take. Maybe, 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 <clears throat> if you're lucky. Okay, I want to get to some videos. We got some Fresh and Fit stuff here. I want to get to some dating stuff. Let's go to the first video. Uh, this is from Fresh and Fit. I think this is Myron uh, talking about good looks. This isn't all controversial. Some of it is just an important message, I think. I like this one from Myron. I think he's right. Let's play it. Thanks for dating. Absolutely. But here's the thing. If you're a good looking guy, but you don't know how to speak, you have no social calibration and you're weird, she's going to quickly get turned off by you. Good looks, all it does, guys, is it allows you an entryway, right, to communicate so that you can spit your game. 
But if you come off weird or awkward, eh, she's probably going to walk away from you unless you've got some kind of status or some kind of other amplifier that makes up for your lack of social calibration. But good looks are definitely important and help you get your foot in the door. But to keep the door open, you need the game. This is, I think, a really important message that he's sending here. And I think it's important for good looking guys in particular because they're, they get lazy. They get really, really lazy sometimes. Um, and I remember, I remember I was like 22, 23, and I met this guy. I was waitressing at the time. I had already had my graduate degree. I got my graduate degree very young. I came out with a master's. I was 22 years old. Valedictorian, master's degree. I came out and I was like, I'm exhausted. That's honestly how it happened. I was completely exhausted. I said, I need a minute. I need a minute. I remember I was waitressing. I was, you know, having a good time. I was like, for the first time I could breathe. I had gone through four years of high school, four years of college, school, 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 school. And I like got a chance to just, and I was like, I'm taking it. And I met this guy. He was universally good looking. I mean, he was doing modeling. He was fit. He was just really like caught the eye of, and he would catch the eye, even if it wasn't your type, you know, everybody's got their type. Um, you, you would be like, he's just good looking. In fact, my best friend at the time was like, he's not my type, but he's a good looking guy. Poor guy couldn't hold a conversation. So you could literally make it happen. You could make it work if you were the type of person that was like, just shh, you know, and it was just, you just looked at him and you just kind of, it would have to be that though. He had never had to really work in anything else. He wasn't funny. He couldn't hold a conversation. He, he was just socially very awkward, um, not, not terribly, oddly not terribly confident. And I wonder if that was because he knew that beyond the looks, like there was some type of vacancy going on. So this is an important message. It doesn't, first of all, good looking. It's not just about like being universally good looking. Everyone's got their thing. Sometimes it's about just having a certain, what is it? Je ne sais quoi. You got something going on. You got some sort of fire, right? Also, good looking comes with like how you carry yourself. As, as a guy, I think it's super important the way you carry yourself, the way you walk into a room. What's super attractive oftentimes about men is men who don't give a shit about how you feel about them initially, right? Like they're not worried about like, oh, I need to dress like this so that a woman's going to like it or I need to do this. So they're just them. They're very comfortable in their own skin. So they're wearing what they're wearing. Their hair looks the way it looks. Maybe their sandals are a little busted. Whatever it is, they're totally cool with who they are. They've got a presence when they walk in that's just like, hey, take it or leave it. You know, that's very, very attractive. Um, but, you know, important message because I do notice and, you know, you always hear that um, cliche about good looking guys that that they're terrible in bed. You hear it. You hear it. I don't really know if that's true. That I don't think that's been my experience. Really not somebody who's been around the block that much. But regardless, good looking guys, they always say they don't have to work at anything because er girls want to be with them because they're good looking. So they get the girl into bed and they never had to figure out how to work the machinery. <laughs> so they don't know how. And they're just like, oh, what's going on here? And they just kind of like get through it um, as opposed to guys that maybe didn't have it so easy and weren't as good looking, but they had to, you know, figure out maybe they became really funny and they became really charming and they were like, I'm going to figure out a woman's body because I'm going to make her really happy to, you know, be with me. And they just worked a little harder. So if you're good looking, don't see it as a pass. Just saying there's a lot more to the package that is interesting than just what you look like. That's going to be like boring after like five seconds. OK, another one from Fresh and Fit. Awesome. Let's play this one. She wants to bring a friend, we'll call it. Every time I invite a girl, she wants to bring a friend. Translation, I don't find you that attractive to the point that I want to spend time with you one-on-one -on -one in a setting where intimacy may be possible. So let me bring a friend as a backup option so that I can quickly and conveniently excuse myself <laughs> from the situation if it's no longer interesting to me. Don't be stupid, guys. No free attention. Move on to the next girl. It's true. Okay, so with the one exception, on a first visit, like a first date, girls will sometimes say, bring a friend for safety. If they're meeting up with you for the first time, especially in this crazy world we're in now, oftentimes they'll say, they'll bring a friend because they want to make sure you're not weird. You're not like some type of murderer. You're not some type of rapist. Your friends aren't we super weird. Your house isn't weird. Like you have a house party. You you don't maybe you take them to a club and you're like, oh my God, this guy's into like mm, some sort of kink and you're not. You know, something weird sometimes happens on that first meeting. So I'm gonna give it a pass for that first one. But guys, if she's taking her girlfriend with her every time, all that means is that she is praying. 
like she's setting up all the filters so you don't make a move. Like, oh, he's not going to kiss me if she's there. Oh, he's not going to make a move. Oh, he's not going to all that. And they may still go because maybe they want you to buy the drinks. Maybe they want you to like buy the dinner. Maybe they want like, you know, an excuse to get out and you take her out. She's got her friend, but she's got her eye on the room. So maybe she meets somebody else that night. Don't think that it's girls will do that. Um, and maybe she's got nothing better to do that night. So nobody else asked her out. She's like, all right, I'll go. But I don't really like him. So I'm bringing my squad. Girls love one on one time with a man. Love one on one time with a man if they really like him. They crave it. They dig it. They want that intimacy of some kind. They're attracted. They want that co- close conversation, all of that stuff. Um, he's on the money with that one, except for the first one. Remember, first date could be a little scary. Just yeah, saying. But let's not get this twisted. You know that most men are far too naive to accept this advice. They're saying, oh, she's bringing a friend. You know what's going through his head. And it ain't that. <laughs> you think he's it's going, like, well, hot damn. <laughs> Be thinking it's a threesome? That's exactly what that guy's thinking. He's naive and hopeful, and that's exactly what he's thinking. I would think, oh, would they be thinking like, oh, maybe it'll be a girl for my friend? Like that'll be like a double date. No, you went straight to the man. Okay, if it's one guy and she's like, hey, can I bring a friend? He's going, well, shit. (laughs) You can bring as many friends as you want. That's a very confident man to think that. Well, guys are stupid. That could be true. I had never thought about it like that. This is why it's important to have a guy here to offer the commentary. I had never thought of it like that. Guys be thinking, oh, they're going to get some type of threesome going on or foursome or fivesome. Could be. It could be. I don't know. Guys in the chat, weigh in. I'm curious. Let Tyler know. He'll let me know what you say. If somebody says they're going to bring a friend, are you like, "Mm mm-hmm, bring two? (laughs) You know? (laughs) Why stop at one? I don't know. Could be. Wow. Things on Jedi Be Alive getting heated, getting hot. You perspiring a little bit? I'm not. Actually, I just have like, I have a little oily skin, so it gives a natural glow. What can I say? All right. Joe Rogan. I love this clip. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Let's play it. Fucking mind. That's what I'm worried about. These poor fucks that are stuck in the fog of woke. <laughs> I walk into a coffee shop. I walk in and I ask the barista for an oat milk cappuccino, which is my favorite beverage. And my wife, I ask if she can have a cafe au lait with oat milk. And I say it just like that. I'll, I'll have a uh, oat milk cappuccino, please. And my wife would like a cafe au lait. And uh, my wife is really shy. She oftentimes like, can we order for me? So I I wasn't man answering for her. And uh, the lady corrected me calling her my wife and said, you mean partner? No, no, this is my wife. This is my wife. (laughs) And uh, she would like a cafe au lait, please. Just bonkers. Imagine how crazy you have to be to talk to a grown man and tell him to not call your wife your wife. (sighs) That there is a correct way to announce her. Young people... This is the feminism. This is it. You know, you can almost imagine what that girl looked like behind the counter, can't you? Can't you just, you have a visual of it. I do. I could see like some like crazy like pink hair or some, you know, like a shirt on that like had some sort of logo like Girls Rock, you know, something going on. Gauges. Yes. Got the nose ring. The nose ring. And she's just like, that's not your possession, you know, she's in on your business. Like, and you're like, what? That's my, that's my wife. What, what's going on? She's all like, I got to break down the patriarchy in this moment. She's got zeroed in on you like a hawk. These are very unhappy people. What can I say? You know, very, very unhappy people. Um, you know it. You know the angry feminists. You've met, you've encountered them before. You've had these conversations with them before. And they do it every time. It's like, and you know, people get mad at me, by the way, sometimes let me correct this. Sometimes I'll say like my marriage is a partnership or like my husband is my partner. I don't mean he's not my husband. He's the man. I'm the woman. Husband, wife, very much so. What I mean by that is very different. It's like just that we share in a lot of responsibilities at the household. And it's like sometimes I'm cooking. Sometimes he's cooking. Sometimes he's got the baby. Sometimes I've got the baby. We have a very unique situation with two people that have really odd jobs. It is what it is. But don't be mistaken about what I'm saying. I'm not like I can't refer to him as my husband and he can't order for me. It's ridiculous. And some people are shy. There are times that I'll say to my husband and I'll be like, he knows it. He's watching now. And I'll be like, Jeremy, can you call him? Blah, 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 blah. And he'll be like, you don't want to call. And I'll be like, I don't want to say that. <laughs> like, you know, women, you know it. 
you know, sometimes you don't want to do something and you're like, babe, could you, you know, and we put them up to it and they do it because they love us. And they're like, all right, babe, you know, I'm going to order your cafe, whatever. I know there was a whole group bunch of people in there that were like, why is he drinking oat milk too? Don't think I didn't catch you guys out there. They're like, oat milk, come on, get some raw milk. I know, I know. Regardless, the angry feminist, not a crowd pleaser is all I'm going to say. Not a crowd pleaser. All right, this one is, I love this one too, because we talk a lot about the robot culture and the puppets, right? And how they have all the little puppets out there. And in, in relation to the vaccine and the booster, I, I need to play this one for you. Let's play, this is New York City, it looks like to me. I'm not 100% sure, but looks like it to me. Let's go. Um, are you uh, vaccinated as well? Yeah, I am. So what's the thought process there? The thought process of... I don't have one right now, I can't. Uh, next question. It's always good to wear a mask because we don't know what can happen. We're still in a pandemic, but we are all vaccinated here, so. It's so you're vaccinated as well? Yeah, for What's sure. What's the thought process there? Um, I mean, like, we should believe that vaccine is like good right now because, well, the government is telling us to get vaccinated and we should believe that it's good for us and we should all get vaccinated for sure. So you're still wearing your mask, I know. So uh, again. This is very important. Um, these people are outside, outside, outdoors with the masks, all vaccinated. It's always the vaccinating people who've got the vaccine and the 16 boosters. I don't know. What are they up to? Like three boosters now, whatever they're up to. Those are always the people that you see with the N95 at Whole Foods. No questions asked. Some even have gloves. I swear to you. I see some things in South Florida, too, that I'm like, really? In South Florida? Some crazies. They're probably visiting from New York City. Regardless, they're outside. But I think it's really important. They don't know why they're doing what they're doing. They can't explain why. That first young girl is like, I can't really explain why I got the vaccine and I'm outside and I'm in a mask. I don't really. They haven't logically come to that decision on their own. They haven't looked at data or figured out, oh, this is why I'm doing it. They've just done what, you know, Dr. Fauci on TV, you know, the Fauci told them to do. And they're just kind of repeating that behavior without question. That other individual, very important, very important. She says that the vaccine's good because the government said it was good and we should believe the government. So I, this is what I talk to you about when I say there are people in society that are wired, wired hardwired to just chew up what the government and what authoritarians give them and swallow them and are totally fine with that. And it won't just be about COVID. It'll be about gender ideology. It'll be about roles of men versus roles of women. They are designed for whatever reason, be it how they were raised or culturally, whatever it may be, I don't know. They are designed to chew up and swallow as opposed to be hesitant to take a bite of something or take it in your mouth and be like, mm -mm, spit it out. Nope, not wired for it. So this robot culture is, is important to understand, not just as it relates to COVID, but as it relates to every major issue that we face that's coming from the top down. So they will swallow whatever Twitter or you know social media deems as appropriate censorship. They swallow that, oh, well, those people must just be bad people. If Fauci and the CDC and the FDA say it's misinformation, Gulp, swallow it, no questions asked. Those are just people who don't know what they're doing. There's no independent thought or research that goes into the process. So if you are on the other side of these issues in the sense that you are a citizen journalist, you're somebody who's like not gonna do something just because somebody else told them to do it, you need to understand these people because the country is split between you and them and you both live in the same country. So you need to understand what's going on here and why certain people are hardwired to absorb as opposed to deflect and ask why. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let's do a TikTok one. This one's funny. I like it. This is the best feature that TikTok has. Okay, you go to settings, you go to privacy, you go to comments, filter keywords, I don't even have to read comments that say chromosome. I don't even have to read comments that say real woman or you're a man or you're a male. Okay, so I don't That's know. That's piece, baby. I don't have TikTok right now. I don't know much about this, uh, how this works. But what's really interesting to me about this is that, and this is obviously someone who's, you know, become a woman from, it was a biological male and has transitioned. That's what it looks like to me. One never does know. 
But what's really interesting to me is that look at the words that she has a problem with. The trigger words, biology, chromosome, guy. It's not like somebody's saying, you know, cursing or vulgarity or these are just regular words. And you know why? Because in the comments on some of the videos, some people are probably like, you're a dude. Like some people probably says that. But here's my question to these people. If you are genuinely comfortable in your skin, if you are genuinely comfortable with the decision and you are comfortable with your skin, why the fragility about it? I'm genuinely curious. Why the fragility about it? Because when I get on here and I know this, if I'm talking to you guys, I'm very comfortable with what I'm saying. I don't give a shit what somebody says about it. I don't care if I get hate comments. It's like, whatever. It doesn't deflate me. I may notice it. I may comment on it and be like, oh, people on this outlet can't stand me when I talk about this. Ha ha. But I don't, it doesn't, I don't do this or I don't block or I don't, you know, unless somebody is, you know, threatening, you know, menacing. I feel like I need to report them to authorities, constantly harassing. But I'm just, I wonder, is it, is it harassment that she has a problem with or is it just these trigger words? And if so, interesting trigger words. This is the, this is the debate we're having, right? When you say biological male or biological woman, some are deeming that incredibly offensive. Others are just saying, what are you talking about? I'm just talking about science. But now science and facts have become offensive. So just think about the direction that this whole thing is heading. I thought that was a really interesting observation to just make us think a little bit more. Okay, there's one last channel I want to I want to hit on today. Um, it's hilarious. It's by a communist. This guy calls himself comrade something. I don't know. We're going to look at the first one um, and then we're going to play through the second one. Let's do the first one first. We'll play that one through to its end and then we'll talk Men about it. Men protect women. From what? From what? Tigers, lions, wild animals, dinosaurs, from what? You all have this stupid fucking conception that men protect women. Men whose job is to protect could not protect children a couple days ago. Regardless, let's get back to the question, from what? Other men? So you agree, men are dangerous. Like, at least some of them are dangerous, right? Because I can already fucking hear some idiots screeching, not all men. But how are we supposed to know exactly which fucking men? How do you assess, without putting yourself in danger, which men are fucking dangerous? Because for all we know, there are so many men out there who are playing nice to get what they want, but when they can't, they're abusive pieces of fucking shits. So we are going to play around the idea that men protect women because you have some fucking ego trip or some shit, but we are going to dismiss the fact that men are the ones who are harming women. How about instead of preaching men protect women, we teach fucking men not to harm women and children? But no, that doesn't work, right? Because you want women and children to be fucking vulnerable so that you can step in and lure them into your fucking safety. Instead of dismantling the fucking social norms and patriarchal constructs that are causing harm to these people, you want to tell women that men are not dangerous while you know full well men are fucking dangerous. Okay, so this, this guy, very odd to me. Uh, first of all, the black nail polish is a nice touch. I'm not into that. I see all these videos now where they... It's like so choreographed. They go up to women and they're like, do, do you like nail polish on men? And the women are like, I love it because it's a sign that a man is comfortable in his own masculinity. It's like so rehearsed. It's like, did they give her a card beforehand and say that most women are not going to want their dude to be walking around with nail polish on? Most. I'm not saying that some won't like it here and there. But for me, it's not a look. I told you, I want my man to look a little grimy, a little dirty. Like he just, there's an image of, you guys know 90210, that image of Dylan McKay rolling out from under the car with the dirt on his face. Tyler might be able to find that one. He's got like a little grease on his face. You could put Dylan McKay rolls out from under a car. I guarantee you 90s chicks posted that somewhere. Looks a little, little scruffy. T-shirt's a little dirty. That's what I grew up with liking. So that's what I like. That's what a lot of women crave. By the way, there's a reason for that. Tyler, if you find it, you can put it up. There is a reason for that. The reason is that a lot of women like masculine men who perform masculine roles, traditional masculine roles. So they like the guy that's fixing your car. They don't want to do that. Not all women, again, there's going to be outliers, but a lot of women are like, yeah, cool. My car is broken. My toilet's broken. Oh, I need something sawed up here. Oh, the electrical wiring is, you know, they like having a guy in the house who's strong, who can handle that stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. 
There is nothing. There we go. That's my boy, by the way. I miss him every day. May he rest in peace. Love him. But look at that image. You see, he's like dirty. He was fixing the car. He had that old uh, Porsche that was so hot. And he was just, I grew up loving this guy. Look at him, though. You see, that face is dirty. You know it, ladies watching. Sometimes you like a little grime on the face because you know they get their hands dirty. That's the kind of guy that usually is good in the sack. Just saying. Okay. Regardless, get back to the video. This guy seems to be a bit of a man hater. Okay. A bit of a man hater. I haven't watched all of his content. I watched several videos, but he's talking about men as if they're all dangerous. And he's talking about women as if they're little babies that can't discern the difference. So yes, good men do protect women from bad men. Yes. What's hard to understand about that? Who are bad men? Well, there are rapists. There are murderers. There are thieves. Yes, of course, pop, the population will have good and bad of both. They'll have good men. They'll have bad men. They'll have good women. They'll have bad women. Are the bad men more dangerous? Well, usually, yes, because they're stronger. They're bigger. It's different. It's just different. Again, in order to have these conversations, though, you have to be willing to acknowledge the basic premise that men and women are inherently different. So this idea that a woman wouldn't be able to discern the difference between a guy who is there to serve in a protective role and wants to protect her and a guy who's a menace is utterly ridiculous and actually very infantilizing of women. I find it really interesting. The communists, the so-called feminist men oftentimes infantilize women in many ways. They infantilize them. They make it like, well, women are being taken advantage of at every turn. Women are making less money. Women Women are making those decisions oftentimes. Women are making decisions to go into certain careers and not others. And as a result of how many hours they put in and the choices they make, oftentimes they're making less money. Women are making decisions about what types of men to spend their time with. Women are making decisions about the level of promiscuity they want to put out there and what they are attracting by virtue of the decisions they're making. How infantilizing to just blame the patriarchy, blame the patriarchy, it's all their fault, and not put any blame or any accountability on women. It's like turning them into little babies that needed to be guided by a leash. So oftentimes these people that are saying, I'm looking out for women, are actually not looking out for women. Looking out for women is encouraging women to think for themselves, to make decisions for themselves, to have accountability for themselves, to be responsible for their own actions, to own their decisions and their choices, etc. So I find it really, really fascinating to watch this unfold. Let's watch the last video from this guy. I have a second one as well, and then we'll close out the show with that. Um, I'm going to just do half of it, actually. We'll do the first half, and then I'll respond. Who the fuck told us women that we should weigh 120 pounds? Women? No. Are you fucking serious? What in fucking deflection is this? I'll fucking tell you who. Capitalism and fucking patriarchy. In the fucking 50s, it was you should put on some weight. In fucking 80s and 90s, you should lose some weight. In early 2000s, you weren't considered beautiful unless we could count your fucking ribs. The fucking model industries just started to accept plus-size models. Industries controlled by men. You're gonna fucking tell me it's women who set the beauty standards? The fucking audacity. Capitalism literally tells people that they don't look beautiful so they can sell the fucking cure, a product so they can fucking profit. Patriarchy is so far up our asses, not only they tell women how they should look to be beautiful in order to control their bodies, but also tell them whether or not what they can do with their bodies, like abortions. Okay, so let's this, motherfucker this guy is, I mean, this is, he calls himself comrade, whatever. I guess he considers himself a comrade. Does he seem happy to you? I'm just asking, does he seem like a happy person? If you had to just say yes or no, you don't, we don't know him personally. Maybe he's the happiest person I know. Does it come off that way? You know, I don't know. Maybe it's just a vibe I'm getting. Um, first of all, he's wrong. For capitalism, you, you just don't get to blame capitalism for everything. It doesn't work like that. Again, think about the mind of a liberal, though, because this is very on point. Liberals blame out. They don't blame within. It's this one's fault. You're a bigot. You're a racist. You're the, it's all out, right? It's not what decision am, did I make? Maybe this wasn't right. What accountability do I have for my actions? It's not a personal responsibility culture. Liberalism is not grounded in that. So again, he's wrong. Women, first of all, judge other women vigorously. 
all the time. Oftentimes, women set expectations for themselves based on other women and the way they'll be judged by them. All It happens all the time. You walk into a room, women are always judging other women. I've said this before. They'll spot, you know, one hair didn't curl pop. Here, you see this piece of hair I got here? Because I got these headphones on. I guarantee you, you think guys are in the chat going, oh, Jet. No, it's some girls like, didn't she like curl that piece? You know it. You know it. Girls pick on other girls. Women pick on other women in sometimes a horrible way. That's a reality. Secondly, again, I'm going to point this out again to you because I can't stand when liberals infantilize women. Let's say capitalism, capitalism, capitalism had an agenda and they were going to put these girls on the covers of magazines and blah, blah, blah. Why do you have to chew and swallow it? Why do you have to chew and swallow it? So just because now women with breast implant, let's say you remember the 80s, right? It was the breast implant period of time. A lot of women had breast implants. Breast implants were everywhere. Does that mean that you can't look at them and say, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not into it. It's not for me. End of story. Of course you can make that decision. What are you, a baby? Are you a little toddler? It's like, oh, well, I'll feel bad about myself. I can't. No, that's a sign of weakness. Accept and own that that's a sign of weakness. If you see women on the covers of magazines that are rail thin to the point where they look like they haven't eaten in four weeks, does that mean you then go? No, no, it doesn't. You don't have to make those decisions. You don't have to make those decisions. And oftentimes, by the way, having come from the performing arts industry and having grown up in the fashion industry when I was younger, I will tell you that most of the, the derogatory comments that came to me in my life were from women in the fashion industry. I went when I was 15 years old, I think it was. I may have told the story initially when we started the show. I don't remember. I went to a, a, a show. I had been, it was like a modeling show. I was short, so I wasn't going to do runway, but I was there for commercial. I was very young. Maybe I was 15. Maybe. I always had a bit of a booty. That's just my body. It is what it is. I love it. I embrace it, but it was there. And I remember them telling me, I think I weighed like, I may, I'm a little under 5'5", five five. maybe I was 110 pounds at the time, and I remember them telling me, my parents, oh, she would need to lose weight. That all came from women. Women were so critical. They used to sit, and it was like I felt like they had magnifying glasses on me. So don't blame, you can't blame all of this out. First of all, you can't blame it on all men. It's not, you can't blame it on all women either, but you can't say women support other women, and this is coming from the patriarchy. That's nonsense. It's nonsense. It's just something that these people do to prop up this idea that women are persecuted all the time. And it's infantilizing again because it it implies that they have no autonomy over their own decisions and no responsibility for their own choices and decisions. And that's just not a world that's accurate when you're talking about adult women. These are adults, are they not? You want to be treated like an adult. There's all these calls for equality and this, that. And yet you can't be treated like adult, adult enough where you can discern a shitty guy versus a menacing guy. Come on. That's a problem. So which way is it? Do you, are women weak and fragile and unable to make decisions? Or are they grown adults that can handle decisions and responsible citizens with accountability? Which one is it? You can't have it both ways. So... I just think it's funny because this guy, like, it's like capital. Again, remember, they vomit out all the words, capitalism, patriarchy, all this nonsense all the time. Actually get into a debate with somebody like that and they're going to shrink in two seconds because essentially what they're doing is infantilizing grown adult women and in the name of protecting them. Utterly ridiculous. All right. I know we didn't spend a lot of time in the chat today. We do have a hard out today. I have somewhere I need to be. Um, I want to thank you guys for being here today. I want to remind you again about Minect. Go over to Minect, M-I-N-N-E-C-T. It's like Minect. I think it was like a minute to connect. Is that the idea behind that? There you go. Send me a question. Send me whatever you like. Don't send me anything. Whatever. It's up to you. But I think it's really cool, and I'm hoping to hear from you guys there. And uh, we will be back here. Uh, what day is today, Tyler? Is today Wednesday? Monday. Today's Monday? I'm not ready for it to be Monday. I'm going to change. I think it needs to be Wednesday. Um, anyway, we'll see you back here on Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Uh, do we have super chats, by the way, that we need to get to? No. Okay. We don't have super chats. And on that note, where are the super chats? No super chats? <clears throat> all right. We'll get to that. You guys are all in trouble. Don't make me. Don't make me come at you. I come through the camera, you know. This stuff's 3D. You didn't know that. Ha ha. Ha ha. All right. See you Wednesday. Bye bye.